The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 48, Nasdaq's down 4, S&P's up 3.5, Gold's up 11.90, trading at 15.16 an ounce. We get silver up 48 cents, 18 dollars 28 cents. They're both catching a bid. Uh, gold's up about a percent. Silver's up uh, two. Tom normally makes sense. Silver is uh, highly volatile. Light sweet crude. Light sweet crude trading flat, 56 dollars two pennies. You get notes and bonds. You get the 10-year down one at 129.25. The 30-year flat at 160. And king dollar. King dollar up 129 ticks, trading 97.760. The euro is at 110. The yen is out here at 108 and a half, and the pound is at 128 to one U.S. dollar. And uh, we're going to start with Amazon. You got it, right? Can I just jump over to the yeah. overnight chart, man? Right. Because, boy, oh, boy, uh, I guess I had jumped across, but check it out, right? So they come out with the earnings. They miss on earnings per share, right? They also guide down for the fourth quarter. Yeah. They're looking for 80 to $86 billion. Not bad. Um, over in the, the, the next 90 days, the holiday season. Right. But the market was looking for about $87 billion, so that is quite a miss. I mean, they could miss by $7 billion over 90 days of revenue. The stock spikes down to sixteen, eighteen, but give, give it 24 hours, man, and we're up almost $100 from that low, seventeen oh five. still down more than 4%. You know, that's a big right. move on a company the size of Amazon, but, man, that is a quick rebound, and we can get into it more. I just want to kind of show that overnight action. And what you're going to have here, folks, this is, uh, you know, I suspect we're going to be right back down here. It's going to get interesting because this is going to be, so here's your high volume low that it went after, 1672. Well, yeah. What did we go to? 1618. I was like, it went after that's, it and it crushed it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Because uh, this was trading at that all pre-morning. Now, what we're going to have here, so let's look at this. So this swing point has 3.2. You're already at 5. You're at 3.4. Put this on a weekly for a second. And there's a lot to digest in there, right? As you pull oh, up yeah. the chart, I was just no, yeah. kind of pulling up the advertising. They went from about oh. 2.5 billion so, last year yeah. to about 3.59 or something this year. It's only an increase of a year. Can I just jump over it's, to the CMEC just to get? Jokes. Okay. But if they start eating into Facebook and Google's lunch, and they will, um, and here's the number. So a year ago, 2.5 billion. This yeah. this uh, quarter, 3.59. 45 percent right. growth in the segment year over year. And um, well, picture we buy everything on Amazon. It would make sense if you buy and you're advertising right beside it. They got they get your eyes, man. Oh, Why not, right? God. And so that is a tiny number, probably comparative to what they might be able to crack if they keep. Uh, exactly. getting into that business. And that business there is like the AWS business, folks. Uh, huge margins. Yeah, there's yeah. no cost for them putting ads on top of the, the right. screen space that they already control. Right. So let's take a look at some of the other higher volume equities. We'll see whether they get any volume out here today uh, in the marketplace. Oh, oh yeah. boy. PG&E. We might as well go there first. Another I mean, one, huh? Yeah. I mean, not another one. I know that the blackouts are persisting. Well, but and there's a huge fire, too. Is that's that what? Okay, I was out. like, what is and the new revelation? That this is? is going right after another high-volume low. I mean, this thing has been laying out here for a while. What is that, 507? Okay. 528? Yeah. These, this is, this, in California, they got real problems, folks. That's the real bottom line. Um, they got a monster fire going on out there right now. Okay. If we get um, into the news, can we just pull it up? Yeah. I hadn't heard about it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot going on, man. Amazon dominating they, a lot of the they, conversation. They were, they were, they were Shutting down the electric, yes, simultaneously. But guess what? This is going. This is one of the biggest winds that are coming over the Santa Ana Hills, and you know. Wow, we'll have to pull it up too. They're saying here that uh, the pre-market was down as low as 485. We're yeah. sitting at 553, so they it got below that low we were just looking sure. at in the pre-market. Um, and they fear that they may be impacted in the Kincaid fire, which has burned at least 16,000 acres north of San Francisco, Sonoma County. That's kind of where some of those blackouts were, right? Are. Yeah. Um, yeah. And today's the day. Now, that has started last night, but they're worried about today because it's today, and they're still three hours behind us, so it's 7 o'clock in the morning there, is when they're going to get these wild winds yeah. in Santa Ana Valley. So yeah. 
Big number, man. It just could continue. Oh. Hopefully, it's, it's, hopefully uh, they get out of harm's way out there. It's pretty intense. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. There's no doubt about that. So um, that's uh, that baby's down a buck sixty. We got uh, the next one, Intel. They come out there. Oh yeah, not bad that's, on it. That. That's up three sixty. And uh, coming off, you know, Texas Instruments chip maker really uh, disappointed. Intel traded lower on that Texas Instruments number earlier in the week, and kaboom, man, doesn't take long. We're just like that. Look at that. Okay, so let's pull this up. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Megan's through his downdraft. Look at that downdraft from yeah. uh, April, I guess. Uh, Fifty-nine dollars, and five weeks later, you're at forty-two. So let's see what they have to say. They have to say that they're making money hand over fist, just like Amazon is. <laughs> I guess so. Man, oh man, right? There we go. Oh, there we go. So let's see. Uh, yeah, they okay. So fiscal year first. Well, fiscal year they had seen sixty nine point five, and now they're seeing seventy one. Yep, right. And billion. Then, yep. Is, right. I mean, it's almost beaten all across the board, right? Yeah. We have the the quarter they just reported earnings per share buck forty two estimate was dollar twenty four. Well, that's a big number. Yeah, it's a big hit. Definitely. Yeah. And um, they're looking for next quarter, like you said, buck twenty four yeah. estimate was one twenty one. Revenue, 19.2. Estimate was 18.86. And when you put it in the fiscal year, they're going to crush it out of the park. Yeah. Um, Good numbers. Yes, definitely. Good numbers. So that's uh, that's the yin and the yang. That's that's in intriguing inside the chip, chip business. Definitely. No Winners and losers, yeah. Right. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, Jaleed is down. Uh, Gilead, yeah. Three. 62. It's no big deal there. Let's go uh, inside the uh, NDX 100. The strength versus the weakness out here. So uh, the strength is Intel. Then you get Charter Communications up 5.4%. Uh, Verizon, no. Verisign. Verisign, yeah, is up 4%. Taken away from it, Illumina, look at this down. That's down, that's that high. Got to love earnings season, man, I'm it's, guessing, it's maybe. such <laughs> a volatile stock, man. Here, let's look at this. This Not is, often we see Amazon up there on the laggard of the I top 3.2, and it's only 3.2, man. That was 9% last night. Yeah. Um, so let's see what's happening with this equity here. Well, nope, can't do I that. Guess, Sorry. Nope. I think I better get another screen quick here. <laughs> while, you're, while you're waiting for that computer to yep. catch up, as you say, uh, well, there we go. But the numbers on Bezos, man, with these numbers are just staggering. What's he on? I think 57 million shares, and that's after... The um, split with Mackenzie, his ex-wife. Yeah. Still, he owns 57 million shares. So every hundred dollars the Amazon moves, 5.7 billion dollars, his personal wealth is affected. Anyway, go ahead. No, no, we'll get back. Into it's it just second. crazy. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, we got Lumina. This is a second gap away. This is interesting, man. I mean, you go back to July. That's their last earnings. I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, went from 380 down to 303. Yep. Yesterday it closed at 309, 315. It smoked again. Yeah. And what do they have to say? There it is. Uh, so the estimate was 870 million. They made 907. 907. Maybe go page up, actually. Yeah. Let's, I think it's right here. Let's see. I mean, good from what I can see right away. This is In terms of fiscal year, 640, 645, right. they saw 60, 610, but they there's needed, something buried in they there. They needed more growth, right. This is a big growth stock, evidently. They didn't grow enough. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We're going to be talking Jeff Bezos as well. Billions. <laughs> If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, October 25th. We get a hoss race, a hoss race, folks, between Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. Uh, and who's going to be the richest man in the world at 4 o'clock this afternoon? Because that's how they gauge this thing. Well, guess what? Bill Gates would say, as of right now, I am the richest man in the world again. Right. Pretty remarkable when you get that type of a turn. And, you know, we're dealing with pennies compared to what both of these gentlemen are worth. But pretty remarkable, man, when you get that type of a shift. Really remarkable, I was saying to you during the break, that Bill Gates has still held on to it for so long right. in light of now, you could say he contributed to changing the world with in personal computing, right, Windows. But man, there's a lot of things that have happened since then, and still he's held oh, yeah. on to that title. Microsoft with a huge resurgence, which is helping him. But as of right now, Bezos has a net worth of $107.1 billion pretty remarkable, 300 million less than Gates. Now, that was a bigger number last night, too. This is updated as of 9.45 a.m., with yep. Amazon at 1712. Well, guess what? So what is we just did the it's math, right? Bucks I right think now. he just got him though. Because Bezos has 57 million shares. Yeah. That's 570 million. Right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So so the, um, but guess what? Did Microsoft just inch up in that same sentence, right? You know oh, that yeah, that's what you yeah, got to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, let's put that on the other side. Well, let's, let me see if we can, can we okay. say maybe they say what that number is predicated from Microsoft because they're predicating that one on 1712 well, on Well, we just got to look at 945. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. Um, so Bezos took the top spot from Mike, uh, Microsoft two years ago. He's held on to it yeah. that long. And they've both been just going gangbusters since then. Um, and as you said, the rankings officially update the close of each trading day. So any change won't, but I'm sure Bill Gates will have a few words to say about that. Um, care less, really. Yeah, like it matters, right. But you know what? I bet it matters a little bit, man. <laughs> you don't think that Bezos is going to be... Uh, Popping the champagne when he loses that top spot going into the weekend, right? I would, I would say that. Uh, not really, but, you know, it's on his radar. You can't help but 38% this year, Microsoft alone has gone up. And uh, Gates has a 1% stake, bringing him, his fortune to 107.4. Um, pretty remarkable. 60% of his portfolio in equities. Um, so Gates, 63. Both of them so young, man. Gates, 63. Bezos, 55. Yeah. And... Um, and this is where they tie into it, though, that if Bezos had not been divorced, then that really would uh, tip the scales. And that's where, because he had such a, a ma mammoth lead. Sure. Now, in fairness 
to Gates if Gates hadn't been given away his wealth, right? You know, to yeah, to yeah, poor people and yeah. and countries and all, the over, trust, all over all yeah, over the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation right. and everything. Um, he'd be up there as well. So pretty remarkable. Can I just say, I just wanted the last, Gates on the other hand. He may have never relinquished the top spot if it was not for his philanthropy. Yeah. Doing him more than thirty-five billion in um, since 1994, and you think about the compounding that would have taken place right. if he had kept that in Microsoft stock. That's just what he gave away starting in '94. Right. So. Uh, oh, so, Microsoft is up since 9:45. Right. 9:45 is right there. It's that's the right. 9:50 bar, yeah. yeah. So it's at least below. 86 cents. Right. Yeah. Pretty wild. It is pretty wild, man. Yeah, they're saying, I don't think they care. They really don't care. But man, when you're the richest man in the world for two years and you go into a weekend and you're, and you're now the number two man, and and I bet he cares a lot more about the fact that Amazon stock's down 4% for the day. It's not like Microsoft charged ahead. It's that Amazon pulled back. That is what I would say um, yeah. Bezos might care about. But as we know with Bezos, man, he cares about long-term growth, man. He That's cares what, about getting something to you and one day, that's, and next year, he's going to care about getting something to you in four hours. He's uh, that's that's what made him at that point, right? right? And so right. I'd say he's he's on the right track. Yeah, I would. That's it's it's pretty amazing that you can run a company that's just that dynamic, that large, and just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. I agree. Let's go take a look at the GDX. We have uh, gold as well as silver. You know, caught a bit out here. It's always nice on a Friday. Uh, so we have, you know, yesterday what you have, you can see it right in the GDX. They start pushing with volume yesterday, 55 million. Took out the swing point there with 50, which is, that's a good indication. So today's going to be a good day, man. Um, you know, we're, we're pushing into a swing high from a 28.36 right now, it, or 27.94. Now that swing only has 45 million. We're already done nine. So that's a big number because what the GDX does do, particularly on a, a day that, it's trending higher or trending lower. I mean, if it's not flat, if it's, it's really, it puts a huge amount of volume in at the close. You know, so this is going to be coming into that swing area with volume. If we go to the SLV, we take a look at the SLV and see where just that. Now, this is physical silver. Yeah, you can see okay. this. This is a nice pop, man. Uh, I'd say so. Yeah. Let's coming talk. into a Friday. Yeah. As Basil would say, our man coming up at noon, the day is young. Yes. We're not even exactly. an hour into the trading exactly. day, man. It's 1030. Most of us in the market, we're up super early, right? But, man, trading starts at 9.30. We're, we're 53 minutes into the trading day. Oh, yeah. That's all. We bring up the contract. You're going to see there's, there's juice under this contract. You're already on 72,000 contracts. So this is a nice little move. And yeah. we, what we haven't had yet, you know, we haven't had the, you know, the dollar basically, you know, we, I mean, a week and a half ago it goes lower, but been sideways since then. You know, you, know, you get a little bounce. Well, you get a bounce this week. We just went 97, 146, 97, 7, uh, 83. So sure. That's not a bad setup. No. You got the Brexit, the Euro. They're going to get a pounds. new election, man? Yeah. They, I don't know what they're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> you and the rest of the world, including I, England, has no idea what totally. they're going to get. I mean, it's just a continual. It sure know? is. So let's go inside the Dow and see what the strength versus the weakness in the Dow. I mean, this market's catching a bid right now. Ooh, Intel. Yep, and tells the big number out there. Yeah. Now, it's interesting here, right, is this is where the price weighted just yeah, does crazy things, it man. It does. Um, you got a company like Intel. We'll pull up their market cap in a right. moment, but just up gangbusters, and they're only putting 25 points into it, versus you have a company like Boeing, which is down almost peanuts, yeah. and they're putting negative 29. You right. know, I mean, so Boeing, that would be down $3.40 would be 1%, right? So you're down just barely 1%. We'll have to pull up these market Amazing. caps, okay? Right. And we have Intel closed yesterday at 520. Yeah. So 260 would be 5%. Um, you know, do the math. We're up 6, 7, 8%. We'll pull up the number, okay? But let's, can we get into what the yeah. market cap of Intel is? So Intel's up about 6, 7, 8 times what Boeing is compared to their market cap, all right? Intel, $248 billion company. My goodness. Boeing? Oh, tinier. Amazing how this works, right? So yeah. you have Boeing, a $191 billion company. Meanwhile, Boeing down 1%, offsetting in the Dow, a company like Intel that's up 7%, right? It's walked. I mean, if you came in, in in math class in ninth grade and you said, this is how we're going to put out the index, the teacher would be like, 
Fail. <laughs> Go back to the drawing board. That's remarkable, man. And really, that's that's that's, that's a perfect that's example. Quite a that's a perfect that's, example that's there. We have lesson, Boeing man. down one percent, putting more negative points in versus Intel up seven eight percent, a bigger company than Boeing, and somehow the index is affected more negatively for a company like Boeing. Crazy. Man. It is. Uh, X A U H U I. These both of these are going to be hitting a bit out here today. Uh, you get the XAU. Yeah, it's a good move. Okay, so let's. I want to see if they got. We had good volume in these last night. I suspect we did. And that's what, just what we need. Yep, a little pop up in volume. So we did 33 million going up to 26. That's good. Yeah, I mean, we were just at 1490, I think. Was it yesterday? Yeah, no, that went quick, I know. I mean, it was, it was either morning. yesterday or, yeah. or right, Wednesday. 15, I says, okay, that was a yeah. pretty good And we made it about 15, 20 yeah. briefly, so. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Dow, Dow up one or two. NASDAQ up 19. S&P's up nine. We'll come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow up 94, NASDAQ up 22, S&Ps up 9. And let's go look at those S&Ps again because... Uh, Getting a little bit of a pop, man, Yeah, right? I'm really curious if it got over those highs of yesterday because the highs, I think we went to 3, 15. That's what I was going to yeah. say, yeah. We're, we're right there. Oh, this is so crazy, man, because it just feels that, that the market had some momentum here. But what is that number there? 3,015.25. Oh, my God, we haven't made it yet. That's... that's nope. 
3,014.75. That was right on the opening bell, right, where things kind of fell off. Yeah, so yeah. Here, let me look at the NQs. NQZ. Man, sometimes you look at this. Oh, that made it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the NQs, they had popped to, uh, yesterday was 79.84. Okay. And, well, you're, you're 10 points over it. Yeah. It, it seems like we're a lot more over it than that, but we're not. But. It's been quite a run since this morning. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, what's the low there? 79.18. We're approaching 80 points above that level. Yeah. Solid 1%. And that's so it. this is going to be cool, folks. So this is your benchmark right there. 7994.75. Oh, we're right there. Boom. Look at that. Yep. And what that is, folks, that's the highs of uh, last week, basically. And it's pretty cool that, what yeah. is this one? 8002 going okay, back cool. to September 12th, yeah, which is, you know. Right. You don't have to be a technician to see that top of the range there. No. Yeah. And, you know, if, in fact, this, if these numbers don't hold up here today again, it's going to say quite a bit, you know, because we've been up here, you know, quite some time. That's, sure. That's the reality. I mean, yeah. and the market has a chance to break, to break topside today, you know. So, yeah. Um, we'll, yeah. We'll see if it can handle it. The, um, Nope. Bezos just made another five hundred million dollars. It's only down forty-five dollars. It man. is, man, remarkable. That's, and that chart doesn't even do its service, right? Because it made it to sixteen, eighteen. We had pulled up the expected move. Is it sixty bucks? I believe so. Sixty-two dollars yeah. okay. or so forth. Okay. Um, and see, this is what you can see, folks. You know, options are great, but what does happen is that you know options are traded during market hours, right? So you can imagine if, like, if you had the puts on this sure. last night, right? You said, "Oh, this is great, man. This thing's down." But yet, guess what? As soon as that market had opened, well, it wasn't the same price. Sure, yeah. You know? So yep. it's a, that's always a tough one when it you're sure in is. that position. It sure is. You're in some good money, and you know. Sure is. And then if you didn't close them right at the beginning here, then you're really in trouble. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. You know, so, Definitely. Yeah. Pretty pretty staggering moves, man. Isn't it? And that one's on a delayed, which is why it hasn't caught up. I think yet. We're sitting at seventeen twenty one. We know the stock's trading at seventeen thirty three already. Yeah. Amazing. It is. The uh, 3M, which is leading the Dow today, just when we were talking about how the Dow is skewed. Yeah. Um, geez, that's, not, that's, a, that's a good bounce compared to yesterday. I mean, that actually, yeah. you know, that was a leader on the way down, but it really didn't get hurt that bad. Maybe some, some help there from Intel, if, uh, yeah. you know, talking about the sector in general might not be, because yesterday they got hurt pretty bad. I know. 159 yesterday. Yeah. You know, 166. The... Day before that, close at 168. Yeah, 76, almost 169. Right, but you're at 166 again. The world is fine. It's, I was gonna say, it's <laughs> almost like nothing happened. It is. You know, it sure is. If you put it on a weekly, it looks like nothing's happened at all. Uh, recently. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm just telling you. Yeah, this week, I'm talking. Yes. About. Oh, right, definitely. Right, yeah. Right. You had a low at 159, high at 168. Because boy, that was quite a sell-off uh, in oh. April and May. Yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt. That's. The big industrials, man. When they make money, they print it. When when they don't uh, get out of the way. Boy, right. So uh, let's go over to the FTSE and see what's going on in the UK. Yeah, because they're talking about uh, Macron in France. He's always been an integral player in there. That yeah. They're saying he doesn't want that Brexit extension. Uh, he's, he's forced in their hand. He he's, yeah. He wants to give him thirty days. Right. And yeah, you know, we'll we'll see where that shakes out, man. The thing, that, the thing that's amazing is that what does happen is that every single European country has to say yes, you know. Okay. It, it's, it has to be 100 percent. That's what's so wild about it. It's like, okay, how do you corral, like, that many countries, you know, in general? And know? maybe that's why things are so difficult yeah. to, uh, and I was just pulling up the yield. We got a little bit of a spike there above 1.78. Pretty tame week in the yield compared to what we've yeah. been seeing Um Across and then, the board, so right? and next Wednesday, folks, uh, that's Fed meeting day. Yeah, interesting. What you are know? we lining up with? So up to ninety. Yes, ninety. Eighty-seven we, yesterday. Okay, was it? Yeah, we're sitting right here in the one point seven five to two column. Odds of a cut come on October thirtieth, day before Halloween. Ninety percent. And then where things really get interesting, I think, right, is that what are the odds that we get a second cut by December? We're looking at 32%. Um, and all but assured, again, the, you know, you're looking at about 94% that you're going to get a cut um, by those two meetings. But you get about, you know, almost a one in three chance that we're getting two cuts. But uh, 
Yeah. That's all that's priced in there, right? right? Oh, I know. Because even when you go as far out to November of 2020, what's the market going to do thinking that they're not going to get another cut? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, this is like, uh, it's been continual, right? I mean, you know, I remember if we, we go back even two and a half months ago, you know, the market even was saying that, and the Fed was actually saying this in one of their statements, is that they may come in the middle of uh, meetings okay, and do something. Do well, you know I, I mean? yeah. so no, that, I remember that. Right. I do. <laughs> Boy, the, the world changes quickly, man. It's serious. <laughs> right now it does. Right. And uh, speaking of changing quickly, right, we had the yield inversion going on from the two-year to the 10-year. Yeah. Well, geez, now we're under 1.6 for the two-year, and we're over 1.76 for the 10-year. That was inverted. That went steep. That sure did. Yeah. That sure did. Pretty cool. It's, it's pretty amazing, man. It is. I mean, it's, this whole interest rate structure, uh, we'll find out what the market's going to want, because the market's going to, the market always wants something, man. <laughs> There's just so many moving parts, right? I mean, that's what I find so interesting um, in terms of all the moving parts that are hitting things right now. Oh, yeah. Big time. And even we had consumer sentiment out this morning at 10 a.m. as we come on the air. Let's jump onto that, and we'll jump over to the Macron one. I saw that as well, but... Consumer sentiment pairing gains from earlier in October while remaining elevated, suggesting American spending will continue to support the economy despite weakness in manufacturing. And that consumer spending, man, it better because that's what's driving everything. Oh, yeah. So University of Michigan's final sentiment index rose to 95.5 from September's 93.2. The data showed today the preliminary reading and median estimate of economists were both 96. The gauge of current conditions rose to 113.2 and the expectations index 84.2. So um, I guess that's a decent number. And I, I'm just going to jump back to the Macron article because that's what I went into the top originally. And we'll see how this one plays out. So you have President Emmanuel Macron blocked the European Union's attempt to delay Brexit for three months, raising the prospect the UK might not know whether it will get an extension until just hours before it's scheduled to be ejected on October 31st, even without a deal. Halloween, it's going to be a spooky day for those markets over in the FTSE, man, if they have to wait literally minutes before they know if they're just going to cascade out of the EU without any type of a deal. At a meeting in Brussels today, diplomats from the EU's 27 remaining countries deferred a decision on the postponement. While none of them want to be seen interfering in the UK's domestic politics, France is at longer loggerheads with the others. Yeah, because look at the bottom. Macron wants to grant a delay to November 30th, I right. assume, to put pressure on the House of Commons to back Boris Johnson's deal. Because that's 30 days. Hey, you got a deal. You Make it vote. happen or let's not, get man. It, let's get it over with. Yep. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, and if we do go over to PG&E again for a second, you're going to see that they uh, they got a big fire going on right now. And, you know, it's coming across saying that, yeah, they very well may have uh, one of their transformers may have, may have started it, too. I mean, not uh, the headline you want to see, right? It, but yeah. it seems like from how the stock's reacting that they already figured out these headlines yes. are coming, right? right, right. Um, that they had a power line failing literally minutes before the wildfire. So you have PG&E had an equipment failure on a high-voltage transmission line just minutes before a wildfire was reported to have broken out late Wednesday. And... Uh, 230 kilovolt power line went down at about 9.20 p.m. local time, according to a report filed with the California Public Utility Commission, and the Kincaid blade was reported to have erupted five minutes later. As of Friday, it had scorched at least 16,000 acres, 49 stru structures. Destroyed. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm trying to figure out? I'm trying to figure out is that has have the infrastructure got so bad out there that this is going on now, or has the heat and the winds got so bad out there that you know it's worse it can probably be an and situation versus yeah, an or right right i it's, mean it's pretty intense man i mean because you know you go back 10 years they had fires but not like this you know what i mean it's like i mean what did we have i mean you know <laughs> not to get political on the climate change right. deal man but if you don't believe that the climate is changing oh, yeah. i don't know what world you're living in right now because right. even in florida yesterday we had a feels like temperature folks of 96 degrees coming into late October, yeah. right? And so I imagine that's at least contributing to some degree, but they have infrastructure problems too. So this right. isn't uh, letting right. them off the hook, okay? No, that's, that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. That's for it sure. goes all over the place. And you know, you can't do that when- When they're in the middle of a desert. That's, that's You can't do that when you're gonna be dealing, and guess what? It's only gonna get worse, no matter what we right. do. And I think we should be addressing that climate change, but it's only gonna get worse, okay? These, these uh, the storms, the, the temperature swings, it's a new high every single week in Florida in terms of temperatures. So they better, they better get that stuff in order. Let's go take a look at this NDX, because it looks like the NDX is starting ready to get, getting ready to sell down a little. We'll see how this shakes out. So you got, uh, what, 1040, it's 1040. And uh, then I'm going to keep your eye on the NDX. Is going to be this uh, 7984. You know, you're above it. We stay above it, you can go a lot higher. Uh, you start giving it up. I mean, because what, what has happened, the reason I'm saying this, folks, is that each and every day what has happened is that, you know, the NDX is with, always seems to be the first one that gets above the high and gave it up. You know, the, the S&P had a hard time. I don't think, it, you know, the S&P didn't make it this morning. You know, they only missed it by a point, though. We went to uh, 3,014, it's 3,015.25. Yeah. Not even a point. A half, half a point. point. 50 half cents. Yeah. 50 cents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty wild. How about Bitcoin, man? We're getting a little bit of a pop on the reprieve that we got yesterday. I think we're up about $200. Let's see where we Let's load up take there. A look. Yeah, up 228 bucks. still sitting 76.85. We were kind of hovering around 8,000 for a while. But Bitcoin up a couple hundred bucks. But uh, Bitcoin been in trouble for a while, man. Oh, yeah. That was quite a pullback two days ago. Even today's pop, 
Nothing too dramatic, but no, uh, not. 15 years. Whoa. Whoa, baby, 15-year chart in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, we'll do, it, we'll do it, what, five? I'll do five. Give me a weekly if you could. Yeah, okay. Up, oh, that's not That's bad. all right. I, no, I'll do a weekly. Just because the early days are almost non-existent, right? You stretch that yeah. thing out. I mean, the fun begins, I said the fun begins basically in 2017. Right. Because what are we trading at there? $745. $745. I mean, it's really remarkable. You go back to 16, I think there were 200 somewhere, 600. Yeah. 482 at the beginning of 2016, 482 to 19,511. And right in that week, they introduced futures. Amazing, right? Got to keep that in mind. No, it is remarkable that that is how that played out. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, hindsight's always 2020. Oh, yeah. It seemed like the easiest thing in the world to say the first time that you could short Bitcoin on right. an actual regulated exchange on top of things. That the thing cascades, of and, course it does. And just here, give them... Go ahead, go for it. It, it only cascaded, folks, okay? This this is a weekly, so you went from 19,500 to 10,700. Is that a lot? <laughs> I don't have my calculator out. Is <laughs> that, that a big number? I mean, insane. What is that for a percentage? Is yeah. that a big number? I yeah. mean, you know, you're just like, okay. It is, man. Pretty crazy. That, that was the, uh, no doubt, the ultimate. And, and, and you got, of course, now you got good old Zuckster out there saying that we're going to introduce a currency. And, you know, don't worry. We're not a bank. We're not filing for a bank charter. And uh, I, I literally, I don't know what politician was behind questioning him on that line, right. but do you hear that one? I don't know if he's a Republican, Democrat, but I loved it. He's saying that's the problem. Yes, no, it's <laughs> That is the problem, exactly. that you are not a bank, you're not filing for a right. charter, and you're about to, you know, because right. he said, would this be like me having money in Wells Fargo? Yeah. He said, well, you know, it, it would be like that, and then he kind of caught himself, I felt like he said, yeah. but we're not a bank. Right. We're not filing for a charter. He said, yeah. that is the Man. problem. Exactly. You know, you don't want to be regulated, and you want to basically control currency. Did you, did you see, uh, I, did, I heard the guy saying, the Zuck Buck. And then they, they had a the picture of the Zuck Buck. Yeah. yeah, I don't want, I don't want to. Uh, it's a I don't, power struggle, I folks. don't want Mark Zuckerberg no. on my money, man. No. I don't trust him at all. Yeah. No, there's, 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 there's no, no way. Actually, did you see uh, Dorsey was going after him yesterday? Good. Uh, from Twitter. Good. And he was going, well, this is interesting, too. Because Tommy was showing me, folks, um, on Dorsey's numbers yesterday, that they were saying... They said they had targeting issues. Right. Okay? And right. so that... Uh, and maybe, you know, listen, if you're out there, give us a call, 877-927-6648. Because what I said is, I think, you know, targeting... Guess what? Facebook is brilliant at targeting, man. Right. Almost to an evil way, I would right. say. And um, maybe Dorsey in Twitter was saying, listen, we can't be collecting this data and targeting people in ways that are not appropriate beyond privacy. Right. But guess what that did? It sent the stock down 20%. Right. Okay. No, it makes less money. It does. Right. And right. Um, I would attest that Facebook is not willing to do the right thing if it comes at the expense of profits. Right. And you see that continually. Right. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. So what, Dorsey was out there giving it to him? And, Good. Somebody's got it. And it was, it was about the speech that okay. he was saying with the privacy. He says yeah. he's, he's not doing it. No, that's, that's, I mean, they yeah, already right. had what was the memorandum. Uh, you know, they already got caught violating trust. Yeah. And they were right. supposed to be doing things in accordance with that agreement. And they just broke it yeah. in, in an amazing way in terms of just the gall to break it with. But it well, doesn't. Well, when you, you know, I mean, that FTC fine was one of the largest they ever had. But for a large company like Facebook, that's nothing. It's, it's, no. You know, it's, it's, no. I would say that that was akin to basically a, a capital expenditure. Right. to allow them to grow. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. it, 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 you could almost, that's why you should have even more punitive damages, right. okay, because it should be more than that because the, that doesn't disin, disincentivize. No. Because they did that, they did it, but guess what? Now they own the world. They own Instagram, yeah. they own WhatsApp, they own Facebook, they're about to release a currency, and uh, $5 billion is nothing. Cause, and then one of the questions was great with because the, with the, they had told uh, the European Union that there's no way they can integrate WhatsApp uh, into uh, Facebook. And did you have that question? No. And so it, it took them 15 months in order to do that. And so they were asking the question about, well, you know, you can integrate, you know, these payments into everything. And he just kept going around it, meaning, and of course, in technology, you know, they might have already been able to do it, period, sure. even before the fact. But in technology, guess what? You know, give it another six months. Give yeah, it two I don't years. believe anything. Yeah. Right. Of course they can do it. Why else would they have bought WhatsApp? Totally. Yeah. Dow. Dow's uh, up 138. NASDAQ is up 33. S&Ps are up 13. Uh, Tommy's going to be right back, folks. All right. You're wrapping it up. I'm wrapping up. Have a good weekend, man. I'll be right back to finish up the program, folks.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. S&P is up 13 points right now, 3,017. We just climbed above that 3,015 price point. The Dow now up 131, NASDAQ up 30 points. Gold backing off a bit. Gold up about $9, now trading at 15, 14, 40. And we've got that dollar index up 161 ticks at 97,792. We're going to finish the program up with a little bit of impeachment politics why not folks because it's going to play into things you know it's political season we got almost a year until the general election and the news coming out just this hour former national security director john bolton's lawyers are in contact with the impeachment probe this one particularly interesting because of the news that was coming out last week in terms of bolton reportedly being so disturbed by the efforts to get ukraine to investigate president trump's political opponents among them vice president Biden that he called it a drug deal, talking about Giuliani being a hand grenade. I mean, Bolton, um, if he goes out there, he could just be another, um, quite a witness there, talking about his exact involvement and having been in touch with that, but coming out just saying that he was so disturbed by the efforts to get Ukraine to investigate President Trump's political opponents, calling it a drug deal. That is the national security advisor for the president being so disturbed by the president trying to use a aid package to force other governments to investigate 
his political opponents. No matter what you think, folks, that's not a country I want to live in. Wrapping it up, again, markets in positive territory. Stay tuned, folks. we got Fast Market coming up next by Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade. Folks, if you haven't checked it out, head on over to the front page of TFNN. Download that demo account. Great platform, Thinkorswim. We're always checking out those one-day expected moves. Yesterday, Amazon, $62. Earnings season in full swing. Basil Chapman, live at noon. Steve Rhodes, live at 1 o'clock. Dave White, live at 2 o'clock. Live programming all day. Should be an interesting Friday. we got markets moving. Who's going to be the richest man in the world? Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates. We'll find out at 4 o'clock. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.